all and welcome back to this course on digital systems. In the last couple of weeks, we have been looking at various ideas of, you know, implementing Boolean functions using elementary logic gates, using standard cells. We use those standard cells to build uh, multiplexers, build decoders, encoders and so on. And we even showed how to build larger decoders using these smaller decoders and so on, right? But now we will shift our logic and solve in some sense the reverse problem, okay? So let's say we already have a decoder or a multiplexer, right? Then how do I implement an arbitrary Boolean function using such logic circuits that are available to me, okay? So our standard cell, okay, is only the following. Let's say I have a 3 is to 8 decoder. S2, S1, S0. This is my enable and uh, this is my output. Uh, so this is, let's say Y7. I have only a 3 is to 8 decoder, okay, right? And uh, so 3 is to 8, by the way, cannot be an encoder, for example, right? So therefore, it's reasonable to just say 3 is to 8 and we know that the structure will tell us that this is a decoder, right? And maybe I have a bunch of, let's say, I have two input OR gates, okay? Okay, this is my standard cell library, okay? So in some sense, I want to implement all possible logic only using this, these components, okay? So let us start with, uh, you know, let's just go back first of all and look at the, uh, Let's look at a very elementary logic gate. Okay, let's look and look at an XOR three gate. XOR three. Okay, so we have inputs A, B, C. Okay, zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one 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 zero one, 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 and uh, my outputs, my uh, output y x r is very simple, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Essentially, it indicates a 1 if there are odd number of 1s in the inputs, right? So, therefore, this is the truth table and I want to go ahead and now implement this particular logic using, you know, uh, just a two input OR gate or a, and a two input AND gate. Okay, can I do it? Obviously, I cannot because I do not have an inverter with me, right? And therefore, I cannot do the A bar, you know, all that stuff. But it turns out I do have a decoder with me, right? So, to understand this a little better, let us just look at, you know, what is, you know, what does this mean, right? So, by the way, in terms of min terms, M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, M7, right? So, my Y, X, X, R that we are talking about is sum of products of min terms 1, 2, 4 and 7, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes. Okay. These are my min terms. Now, let us go back and look at what does this decoder actually do? Okay. Yk, if you look at the output Yk of this decoder, right? My 3 is to 8. Right? This is nothing but enable and the dot is an and mk. 
okay where mk is the min term involving s2 s1 and s0 okay is what min term is the kth min term okay so essentially what we are doing what we have with a decoder is in some sense a circuit that already gives us the necessary min terms right so if s2 s1 s0 happen to be a certain combination that particular output is going to go high provided the enable is high right that's why i have basically written this uh, you know enable and mk right now therefore if you look at this xor gate xor3 gate it is simply m2 plus m4 plus uh, no uh, there is m1 m1 plus m2 m4 and m7 right now therefore i can easily use the decoder right to basically generate this for me right so all i have to do is the following um, basically let me just right this is my 3 is to 8 decoder this is my enable these are my select signals okay i'll now write these signals inside it's not why not y1 y7 okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and actually 8 i need 8 of them right uh, Y7. Okay. So all I have to do now is to simply map this XOR gate that I want to implement onto this decoder by connecting the inputs appropriately. Okay. So first of all, the enable has sort of no role here. So I will try that off to VDD or logic 1. Right. Now the S0, S1, S2, right? So remember, it is in this order. S2 is the uh, MSB, S0 is the LSB. In this case, C is the LSB and A is the MSB. So I will connect A, B and C, okay? And now, what do I have? I, I, the XOR gate that I am trying to implement is simply M1, M2, m4 m7 so all i have to do is take those four lines m2 1 0 1 2 3 4 7 right these are the four min terms that are involved in the xor 3's output right and now if i were to implement this you know let's go back and see i have a two input or gate a two input and gate right which i may not need by the way but i can just simply do this right okay so what i get here is y x or I can even go back and call that y x or 3 just to be sure. Okay. Right. Effectively, without using an inverter, we have been able to implement this kind of a logic. So, it is very essential, right, as I told you in the earlier lectures also, for us to be able to visualize implementing a truth table with any given component to us ultimately any digital component is giving us some form of a min term you know output and we just need to map our truth table onto that logic block and we will be able to implement this uh, idea very beautifully right now what if i wanted to implement uh, you know let's say another xor gate right uh, i mean another a different uh, you know truth table 
So instead of y x or 3, let me say some arbitrary y which is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, some arbitrary thing. So, we basically we are saying y here is summation uh, or I can just say m2 plus m3 plus m4. Okay. Now, let us say in this, you know, in this case, let us just assume that I wanted not just the XOR3 output, but I also wanted that other Y output. My system takes three inputs, A, B, C. I wanted two outputs, okay. Basically, I wanted to build a system like this. Uh, a, B, C. And I have two outputs y x or 3 and y uh, an arbitrary y okay this is the block and I am trying to implement this now you see that we have already implemented uh, m2 plus m4 for the x or 3 right now all we need to do is add the m3 inside right so uh, therefore you might want to revisit some of these, you know, implementations for more optimal this thing. So, let us look at that, okay. So, for example, if I were to do this without any optimization, I would need M2 plus M3 plus M4, right. So, this is M1, M2. Uh, so, let us say M2 plus, one second. Uh, One zero one two. Okay, I have one two. Okay, one two four seven. So I need M two plus M three plus M four. Right. So I would have to do the following: M two plus M three using a two input XOR gate. M two plus M three, and then I needed M4 also to come out, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right. So, therefore, I would have had to do the following in order to get this would have been my implementation if I wanted to do both Y, X or 3 and Y. Now, we see that the number of OR gates, okay, so how many decoders? We needed 1 into 3 is to 8 decoder, right? And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 into or 2 gates. But then, given that we wanted to do y x or 3 and y together, maybe we can rearrange some of these terms so that we can optimize on the number of gates that are needed. So, why should for example, you know, I arbitrarily chose this, I said I will do M1 plus M2, M4 plus M7, but if I had chosen to do M2 plus M4, right, instead of this, if I just rewrite this as M2 plus M4 plus M1 plus M7, right, here again M2 plus m4 plus m3 right so if i chose to do something like this right in that case it it just turns out that i can reduce the number of gates okay so therefore what i will do is i will make a copy of this again and come up with a more optimal uh, so let me just move this to the left first Okay, I am going to now take off all these gates here so that I will redraw them nicely with an optimal thing. So, what do I want to do? I want to do M2 and M4 first. So, I will get M1, M2 and M3, M4, right. So, this is one or gate, okay. And 
then I have two different things. I need to do M1 plus M7, right? So I will do um, M7, okay? And what's the other thing? Uh, I, okay, now if I just combine these two outputs, I will get my y x or 3. On the other hand, if I took this output m2 plus m4 and ordered it with m3, right? So all I have to do is 0, 1, 2, 3. So I just have to take this output here and yeah. Y. Okay. So if you look at this, uh, you know, we are talking of 0, 1, 2, 3, which is going there. Okay. Um, remember, there is no dot on any of these crossing lines. So there's no, uh, there's no crossing connections in this case. So 0, 1, 2, 3 and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1 and 4, M1 plus, uh, no, M, what do I have? M1 m2 plus m4 okay this is my or gate uh, 1 2 3 4 right here i had 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay therefore i can reduce this now and make it four or two gates okay so in general when you are building a system with multiple inputs multiple outputs it is also very useful to see if certain intermediate outputs can be used in a, as a common signal to generate multiple outputs this will also help you reduce the number of logic gates that you are using right so uh, of course now by the same logic by the same principle i can extend this idea to implement any arbitrary boolean function right so for example if i had a function of n variables a naught a1 a n minus 1 right some you know function mint sum of min terms 0 1 5 something right 2 power n minus 1 right some some arbitrary combination of min terms all i need is a n is to 2 power n decoder right so you can do this with n is to 2 power n decoder okay and depending let's say you know this corresponds to some uh, uh, L min terms, right? So I have to just use one n is to two power n decoder and one L input put or gate, right? And if you have only 3 is to 8 decoders, then all you have to do is build your n is to 2 power n decoder with those 3 is to 8 decoders that we discussed earlier. Similarly, the OR gate can be built using the 2 input OR gates and so on, right? So effectively, any arbitrary Boolean function with an arbitrary truth table and, you know, arbitrary set of min terms can be represented using a simple decoder circuit and a bunch of OR gates, right? Okay. 